Hi there. Welcome to the Schwoven's Nest. My name is Sandra and I'm so glad you're here. My first project for you today is something that was inspired by Pinterest. I saw someone make this cute little swing for their tiered tray. So I'm using one of these medium sized tumbling tower blocks. I'm just giving it a dry brush in white because I want a little bit of that wood to show through and give it a rustic look. Now I'm taking some twine and I'm doubling it up, tying a knot at one end, and then I'm going to cut a strand probably about 18 inches in length and tie a knot at the other end. Then I'll do that one more time. This next step is super easy. You're going to take some hot glue, put a little bead on one end and then glue that little knot on. Then you're going to take some hot glue and do the same thing on the other end. So you have the first part of your swing rope. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side with the other strand and this project is done. Stick around to the end of the video where I show you how to style this on your tiered tray. I'm going to add a little bird to mine. My second project for you today is using one of these little terracotta pots that you can get in a pack of three from the Dollar Tree. It was already painted previously from another project, but I'm going over it with a different color. This is sort of a mushroomy colored chalk paint that's on my brush, but now I'm going to take some Parisian gray folk art chalk paint and do some dry brushing to give it a little bit more of a weathered look. I'm going to glue down one of these styrofoam balls that I get in a pack of six or eight from the Dollar Tree. And I like to use these for small projects because they fit perfectly and you don't have to use the floral foam and cut it up and make a mess. Now I'm just going to add a big blob of reindeer moss right on top. I'm not even going to hot glue it in. I got some of these little baby succulents at my Dollarama store and I don't like the color. I know that's what succulents look like, but I'm not into the burgundy. I'm not into those bright greens. So I'm taking the Martha Stewart vintage chalk paint in the color eucalyptus, and I'm going to give them all just one coat. I want a little bit of that original color to peek through because that just gives them more texture and makes them look more lifelike. While I wait for the succulents to dry, I'm going to doctor up this little pot with a little tissue paper print. I'm using some Mod Podge and I'm going to just put a nice thin layer of Mod Podge all over where I know the label is going to go. Then I'm going to grab it using my paintbrush. I love this trick because then I don't have to use two hands. I can just put that paintbrush right in, smack in the middle of that transfer and then just place it where I need it to be. Then you're going to take your brush again with some Mod Podge on it all the time and starting from the center, work your way out. If you'd like to see a start to finish tutorial on how to print on tissue paper, I'll have a link for you at the end of this video. Now I'm just going to take some hot glue and glue these right down into the moss and into the styrofoam. I think this little mini succulent garden turned out super cute. For this next project, it's super easy. You need seven of the tumbling tower blocks. Now you'll notice mine are a little bit bigger than what you can get at the Dollar Tree, but I don't have the ability to get them at Dollar Tree anymore. They're not carrying them, so I had to look elsewhere. Anyhow, I'm going to glue three of them together, and then I'm going to glue two of them to the sides to make a frame and I'm going to have them standing on their ends. And then I'm going to add two of them on an angle at the top to make the roof of a house. I'm going to paint the house white and the roof light gray. 
the white paint that I'm using is a DIY chalk paint. I learned this technique from Holly over at Hot Humble Pie. So if you're not familiar with her channel, you're going to learn so much stuff there. I know I have. But I've got this recipe down in my description box if you want to take a look. And of course, if you've been watching my channel, you know I love to distress things. So I'm just using a fan brush. It's really rough. It's got some paint crusted on it and it just gives some really great texture. So I'm just dipping the brush in the paint, dabbing some of it off on the paper and then just dragging it across the house in the direction of the wood grain. Since this is a little sign that's going to be going on a tiered tray, I decided to make it double sided. So I'm going to use my CraftSmart oil based pen and write the word home on the front and farmhouse on the back. If you don't want to handwrite this, you can by all means use some stickers or a stencil or even a Cricut. This next project is also going to use the same tumbling tower blocks. I'm going to create a little farmhouse window. Now I'm not going to use all of the four panes that you see sometimes for the windows. I'm going to make this what's called a double hung window, which is an old style farmhouse window. And that's what it looks like. So I'm going to just use some hot glue and glue all of this together. I started painting the window but then realized I needed something to make it be a little bit more sturdy. So I'm taking two of the Dollar Tree tumbling tower blocks and I'm going to glue them vertically, two to the front and two to the back. This is also going to serve as the outdoor windowsill. I gave the window a couple of coats of the white chalk paint and then I decided that I wanted to put a little flower box on here. So I cut this piece of bamboo stick which is pretty much the same width and thickness as regular popsicle sticks or craft sticks and I cut two small pieces that you can see me gluing here on the side and now I'm going to take this longer piece and glue that to the front and that will become my window flower box. I wanted the flower box to have more of a wood look and I did like the natural wood but I thought it would look a little bit better if it was just a little bit of a deeper color. I'm just using this walnut gel stain and a tiny rough brush to just dry brush some on the front and the sides. So a mini window and a mini wood flower box also needs mini florals. I'm just taking one of these blooms from the Dollar Tree that you can get in a bunch and I'm just going to cut off all the little individual stems to give me tiny little lavender flowers. Then I'm going to take a couple of the leaves and cut them down into leaf shapes as well. I'm going to glue two of the full size leaves down at the bottom to cover up the white but also to give the little tiny flowers and leaves something better to stick to. I'm going to hot glue the lavender bits all in a row all the way across. Then I'm going to add in a few little leaves to the front. I'll add some leaves into the back portion of it and then add a couple more stems to make them look a little bit taller in the center. This kind of tiny work is really finicky. If you had a good pair of tweezers, that would probably work better. I was trying all sorts of different ways to get these in, but my chubby fingers were giving me such a hard time, but I made it work. I'm going to use the same brush and the same black paint and distress the white so it looks a little bit more rustic and weathered. For a final touch, which I think might just have taken it right over the top, I'm taking some buffalo check ribbon and I'm going to glue it down in three spots on the one side and just give it a little bit of a fold and then glue it down and then another fold. This is going to look like curtains. And I thought this would be so cute to have the backside of the window with curtains so it looks like you're looking into a real farmhouse window. You'll have to let me know if you think this is too much, if I just blew it with this, or if it's adorable. I think it's super cute, but it might be a little much. So I'd love to hear what you think. 
then I think I went a little too far, but I still love it. I glued on this tiny little piece of ribbon to make a valance across the top. So now I have a little set of cafe curtains on my farmhouse window. I think it's adorable. I don't usually do such cutesy stuff here on my channel, but I couldn't resist. I just love how this little guy turned out. My fifth and final project for you today is using one of these little cups that came from the Dollar Tree around Valentine's Day. It has a little heartfelt saying on it, which of course I'm going to remove and I'm using 100% acetone and a small rag to wipe this right off. I flipped the little jar upside down and I'm taking another cork piece that was left over from another one of these that I didn't use. I'm going to glue the first cork with the wide side facing down and then the second cork will be with the narrow side facing down. So it kind of gives it a little bit of a V shape. I'm trying to get the effect of an old fashioned milk can. I wanted to camouflage some of the little dents and cracks from the cork so I'm taking some spackle and I'm just going to put a thin layer on just to fill everything in. I ended up resorting to just using my fingers when I got around to the sides because this flat piece just wasn't working and I was too lazy to get up and grab a popsicle stick if you can believe that. Anyway. I'm just going to go ahead and clean this all up and then I'm going to give it a light sanding after it's dry. Then I gave it a couple of coats of my DIY white chalk paint and set it aside to dry. Now those milk cans have these really funky little handles on the side and it took me a little bit to figure out what I could use to make it work and I decided to use some cork ribbon from the Dollar Tree. I cut it in half lengthwise and then I just glued it onto the sides of the little milk can facing up and then twisting it and facing it down as you can see me doing here. It's kind of hard to explain, but I think you kind of get the idea when you see them done. Now I'm gonna give them a coat of white paint as well. I'm showing you here the little farm brush label that I put on. This was also a tissue paper print. I totally forgot to turn my camera on when I was doing that portion, but it is exactly the same as I did for the terracotta pot earlier on in the video. Now I'm taking a makeup sponge and some black paint and giving this an enamel look. I also used my Craft Smart paint pen to get into some of the center cracks and crevices because I didn't want to mess up with the makeup sponge and put too thick of a line. The shape of this isn't 100% like one of those milk cans, but I'm pretty pleased with how it turned out. So since I've done a bunch of tiered tray minis over the past year, I thought I would show you how I style my tiered trays as well. I'm just going to put it to music and I'm going to make it go a little quick, but you'll get the idea of how I like to do them. But first I'm going to show you how this little swing works out. So your tiered tray has to have a little pedestal piece at the top where you can loop the little strings on and then you can add whatever you want to the, your little swing. And I just love this little birdie. I think he looks adorable on here, but you could definitely put other items on here as well. So now I'm just gonna start adding some different elements and a lots of greenery. I love to have greenery all through in pots and just tucked in between in all of the little open spaces. So I hope you enjoyed this part of my video.
thank you so much for watching my video straight till the end. If you liked it, give me a thumbs up. That tells YouTube you liked it and they promote me more, which helps my channel grow. If you're new to my channel, I'd love for you to stick around. If you like what you saw, hit that subscribe button. That black arrow will point you in the right direction. Take care, my friends, and I'll see you in the next one.